Oh, right. So I'm going to do a Facebook Live because I did some kind of microphone enhancement where it takes away the background. I mean, we'll just see how it records. I'll just troubleshoot my way through it. Uh, you know how shit goes with all the different updates. And like anything, everything is subject to continuous synchronization, <laughs> up syncing and down syncing and all that. So, all right. So yeah, this last night I woke up in the middle of the night, just completely coughing, like seriously coughing up a storm. And I'll tell you, I mean, when even when you don't think you're exposed to all the particles that are in the atmosphere, absolutely you're exposed to them. And they do affect you and your body has to filter them out. Okay, your body has to filter them out. And so last night I was filtering out the particles because I did go outside for a minute because I was waiting for my groceries. And I, you know, was out there for maybe like, well, yeah, a couple of minutes. But even then, I mean, when your system is so on point that even a couple of minutes, your body has to, your body has to release those demons. It has to go through that energy conversion. Obviously, I ate last night. No, not obviously. Yeah, I ate a pizza with my husband and I had fish sticks and I had two bowls of salad. Those little personal salads you get it from Walmart. And so... I was pretty much well, like well fed and I had a little ice cream cone. And so, you know, I, I obviously you have to feed all energy. So I woke up coughing and then of course, you know, that the smoke, the whole air alerts and everything is, uh, set, at least in Ohio set through Friday, but we're not getting rain until next week. So and even then all that stuff coming, coming down and then, whatever. I mean, you just have to, just got to deal with it. So, and so, yeah, so I woke up coughing. So I, I was basically blowing up loogies this morning, like coughing out loogies, coughing out loogies, of course, are release demons, but just coughing out, coughing out stuff. And I'll tell you, if you haven't done that, if, if you're just starting to explore the J world, maybe you did, maybe made one jar of J juice, which I'm not recommending that you stay on it for a long ass time. It's everything is, is, uh, a transition and it should be done like slowly. And you also have the atmosphere to deal with too, the ionic atmosphere that'll bring up stuff, but you literally have to bring up everything that's all fucked up in your system. And it comes through the mucus. That's why drinking milk or drinking cream and coffee to get everything accelerated and activated is going to help release, but it's going to be a long ass release process. And so, you know, somebody asked me last night through my web, like my business page, he's like, hello, I have a vision impairment that I have had since birth. I've had 33 cornea transplants. Jeez. I also have IBS that puts me in hospitals regularly. I live in Vancouver, Canada. I'm wondering if your protocol can improve my eyesight or help my stomach conditions. Wow. You know, you know, with that stuff, there's nothing I could say to that. Really? Because if you have 33 cornea transplants, okay, you have IBS and you go to the hospital all the time. You got to stay in the hospital because you won't be able to handle facing the demons. Like really, you won't be able to handle it. Um, and I'll tell you why, because you've had so much things happen to you. You've had so much trauma from all the different transplants that for you to come back from all of that and find that relative equilibrium, that relative peace, I couldn't guarantee when that would happen. There's no way I can guarantee when you would actually get relative peace. And plus your cornea transplants, IBS are connected to every other system in your body. You have those two systems, your eyesight, right? And is that even a system? Well, yeah, it's part of your systems. And you have probably a neurological system. And you have a digestive system that is linked to everything. Who knows what else is lurking in your genetic line? Who knows what else is lurking? So when you're 
if you were to ever embark upon the J world, not only would you have to trigger the pain in your cornea <laughs> because you have to revisit all that trauma, but you'd have to deal with the digestive side of it, which could be very uncomfortable, and then anything else that is that needs to be dealt with in all the rest of the 11 different systems. And if you can look at your predisposed issues and look at what your family has dealt with, and even then other things that have come along the way, you got to deal with that. And I'll tell you the layers and layers of bringing up stuff and then releasing it and having to eat the food, release the demons and bringing up stuff, releasing it, eat food, release the demons. And I mean, sometimes you have to do my method because not all the time can you get everything out, even with food. That is a process that you're going to have to figure out if you're even willing to embark upon it. So I really can't answer that and say in a flat answer, oh yeah, no, I, J, JJ will not give you the relief, the immediate relief or the magical, all of a sudden, oh, everything is great. It is a process that you have to commit yourself to and pretty much basically change the way you look at pain, food, and your lifestyle. And if you've had 33 cornea transplants, okay, and you've been in hospitals regularly from IBS, you need to stay in the hospital system. That's all I can say. You need to stay in the hospital system. I am not recommending the J world to you because in my opinion, I don't think you have what it takes to handle it. And if you think you do, then you talk to your doctor. You tell them exactly what I said and you give them my book and you tell them this is what <laughs> she has done has done and is doing. And how, how do you think, what do you think of you taking what she has done and incorporate it into my maintenance schedule of whatever? And if they can't support you in that process, then you, know, you don't need to be doing it. Because you actually need a doctor to watch over that process. There are some people who have not had 33 cornea transplants and aren't sent to the hospital regularly from IBS. And so they could potentially do this and they know what's involved. They have a relative okay support system and they're open to feeling the pain and changing a lifestyle. And so they know they can do it. Other people who have had so much doctor intervention, it's probably not possible because you probably didn't have, well, yeah. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. Okay, so when you, when you saw that trailer, of Blade Runner 2049 and they're like, yeah, every civilization had or has a disposable workforce and that is the order, a disposable workforce. But here's the thing, you're the one that determines if you're disposable or not. You're the one that's going to determine based upon today's situation. As far as all this climate change and access to information and all the predictive programming and all the movies, you'll be the one to determine if you are disposable. And so not everyone is going to want to bring on the pain and bring on the adaptation and bring on the changes. Okay. I mean, I had someone say to me that it's harder to go from heat to air conditioning and from air conditioning to heat. And when the air conditioning makes you so cold, it's because you don't have enough fat on your bones. You have to bring on the fat. You have to bring on the substance. And that is uncomfortable. And so if you're more comfortable with no AC in your house, that means that you have a lot of heat to your body. And the heat out there is going to cause a lot of energy conversion which is the whole E equals MC squared. Okay. And then the thermodynamics. Okay. So, you know, people that don't want to feel pain, they're, they're going to be cold, less substance on them through air conditioning. I love air conditioning. I don't want to have a bunch of heat in my house. I don't want to be outside if I don't have to, especially in these conditions. You know, I mean, there's enough energy within my body that I don't need to bring on any more heat to melt away any more fat, any more substance, because I need it for 
when the climate changes and when it needs to filter out things and bring on the substance. And so having my house be around 69 degrees, I run the AC all the time. What all 69 degrees. It has been that hot. But the AC also filters out a lot of the crap out there. But I still have to assimilate to it. I'll still go outside, but not a whole lot. And if I was working at a profession that was outside a lot, I would have to be releasing a lot of demons to make up to make up for breathing in all that excessive particles, particle acceleration. Okay. And so let me read this. So we have Einstein's theory of relativity. Okay. So where did all that energy originate as far as Einstein's E equals MC squared? Einstein provided the answer with his famous equation, E equals mc squared. In the equation of E equals mc squared, E stands for energy, M stands for the object's mass, and C squared represents the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second multiplied by itself. Okay, so that's energy. That's all the energy in the universe. And then there's mass. That's why when people are, are larger, not only are they very influential, but a lot of people orbit around them because of that energy that they have, that tractor brings people around them. So when you have a large voice or a large mass to you, then people orbit around you. That's all, that's all the, the, the energy. And then you have the force equals mass times acceleration and all that. And then there's other formulas that explain how energy and speed and mass and how energy converts. And that's training your brain to understand the micro, the quantum physics of what's going on. Not so much the social constructs and the politics of what's going on. But then you start studying the quantum physics of what's going on. And then your brain works in a very different way. And that's why I was then showing you guys how to exercise both sides of your brain. So that way... You're not always working from your right side where everything is creative and theoretical and emotional and political and religious and potentially scientifically dogmatic, but then you can switch to the other side and go to the more analytical where you're developing new logics as well as understanding other logics out there. So you can apply all of them together and figure out your own thesis of your life. But that would also require you releasing all that distraction. And that would require you changing the way you do things. So you have that opportunity to, to release all those little demons that are not allowing you to make the connections, the real quick connections. Okay. And so that's why there's a balance of how much substance and fat you have and too much or too little, too much, so much distraction too little, you don't have enough a substance to make the connections. You're starving for intelligence. That's the thing about people who are too skinny and are constantly taking things that keep generating so much energy, more than they can retain. They can't make the connections because they don't have enough intelligence in their body to make those connections. But someone has so much intelligence, then it becomes chaotic because it's so diverse that there's so many words and emotions and theories and other things in between each concept. And so then it's harder to wade through all of that trauma and bullshit and distraction and jargon and predisposed issues. Okay. The hell? Oh. <laughs> okay. So then, so that's that. And then what did I say about that? So you are atomic energy. So if, right, the logic test, value if true value, if false, developing arguments, if then. And so then you have the force equals matter times acceleration, force equals mass, matter, force equals mass, not matter, times particle acceleration. Now you see what's going on with how people are being impacted by the particle acceleration from all the different particle accelerators. 
that have been around forever. Geoengineering has been around forever. I mean, you were brought into this world under the assumption it's always been like this or it's only changed a little bit. You accepted what was presented to you at the time and then reinforced by your friends, your family, your parents, your government, the institutions out there. And so when there is a slow rate of change, like seasons changing, spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer, and then spring, summer, spring, summer, fall, winter, yeah, that's accepted. Cold and flu season, allergy season, particle acceleration, okay, the pollen. But then when they say there's going to be climate change and there's a whole campaign around that, then that is an increased rate of change, an increased evolution that right now people are freaking the fuck out over. And you should, because you were never conditioned to deal with aggressive change. You were only conditioned to deal with slight evolution, slight changes. And so that's why then you have the dichotomy of the Christians and the scientists, though we have Christian scientists, because the Christians are all about creationism. So you were brought here to the, on this earth to create, to be a disposable workforce when you think about it, and then disposed of, dying and reproducing. And then there's evolutionists that are like, okay, we have conditioned these people not to evolve. We have conditioned them, their girls and their boys, to do a specific job, like in America, disposable workforce in America. That's why you're seeing all our girls being programmed for sex, and even parts of the UK and other parts of the first world. Programmed for sex, maybe academics, and influencing. And then the men are programmed for academics as well as heavy labor. Or the women are programmed to be a wife. To be a wife, to be a mother, to be a girlfriend, to be somebody's arm candy, Stepford wife. That's a disposable workforce. That's the order of things. I mean, if the men in the oil fields and men in the trucking industry didn't have a beautiful girl by their side and didn't have the hobbies like the fishing and the hunting and all the different distractions that are out there, then what would it all be for? They just don't want to go to work and that's it and come home and watch something on TV. They want to have a beautiful girl to have sex with. They want to have so many things that... Uh, well, not a beautiful girl to have sex with, but to have the hobbies and the distractions and the marriage. Okay. And so that's, that's, so that's, so that's why the marriage was developed. So that way there is that stability. There is that then making things mean something. Okay. Oh, Jesus. These freaking idiots. <laughs> I'm sorry. Those people that say, oh, I think your, 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 your profile is so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Please <laughs> be my friend. Oh, God. Anyways. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that's, that's why the women have been developed in a lot of ways is to be the wife, the mother, the distractor, the, the, the creator, right? Not really much the evolver, but she was is the creator and then she dies. And then she also destroys her children when the system wants her to do that. Okay, that's the reality of, of the first world. Half of them is a disposable workforce that don't realize that they are that they have been programmed to be disposable. Now you're being given a choice. You don't have to be disposable. Neither do your daughters have to be disposable. Neither do your sons have to be disposable. But that would require change. That would require so many things that when I say it, <clears throat> people get offended. Absolutely. I'm sorry people get offended by what I say. But either somebody, either you have the opportunity to make a choice or you're thinking this is the way it is. And it's not the, always the way it is because then people are resisting themselves out of existence. But why don't you let them resist themselves out of existence? Why are you trying to save them? Because humans naturally want to help each other, even at the expense of their own reputation. 
Not all the time. Not all humans will, will, will risk their reputation to help other people. But some will. Some will go that far because they know they can handle it. They know they can survive that energy conversion. Because when you think about it, you know, we're trying to signal other cells, that are evol other evolutionary cells that think the same way, know there's something going on, want to survive it, and have what it takes to do it. And so then we connect, and that's cell replication. Cell connection, cell replication. And there are others who reject it, who repel, who are repelled by your information. But then you're a cancer to them because they can't stay away from you, but they are repelling, they're repelled by you. That's those who block me, but but not block. That's who defriend me, but don't block me. Because <laughs> they don't like what I have to say. They're offended by everything that I'm saying, but they don't have the heart to block me. But they're trying to send a message. I'm defriending you because you're fucking insulting to my world. But I can't stay away from your information. Because when you block someone, you, you, you've completely cut off and they're dead to you. But when you defriend someone, that sends a clear message. And I'm not trying to destroy anyone. I'm trying to give you guys a choice. But some people are kind of pigeonholed. And I'm sorry that you are. But it doesn't have to be that way. And it, it sucks that we weren't given this choice a while ago so we can prepare for what's going on. But better late than never, right? Better late than never. And so... The equation developed, so then you have E equals MC squared. Okay. Um, the equation developed by Albert Einstein, which is usually given as E equals MC squared, showing that when the energy of the body changes by an amount energy, no matter what form the energy takes, the mass or M of the body will change by an amount equal to energy divided by the constant, which is the speed of light, timesing itself c2 <laughs> see i like to exercise both sides of the brain i purposely try to understand the science the real like complicated science around the physics part of it because when you can actually understand and see what they're talking about just by looking at the formula and reading the words and you understand from that level then when you want to transfer to something like computer script programming and other professions and industries and things, then you have that platform of information to work from and understand and see it from the physics point of view, the computer science point of view, even the social constructs point of view. That's connecting all the dots so you're not compartmentalized. But right now, academia is compartmentalizing your children, your daughters and your sons are going off to their college. They're only going to learn very small, very minute concepts relative to what their major and minor is and relative to what they want to go into, assuming that they can compete with those that have even more of a complex academic background and other CRISPR gene editing that maybe your kid doesn't have. So that's why self-teaching, self-motivation, not just always regurgitate what the professor, professor says or some professional in whatever field. That's why that's so important to be motivated to understand the bigger picture, not just that narrow point of view from your professor and from that college that you're paying $20,000 a semester to. you got to be motivated to learn it all. And how motivated are these girls who have been programmed to be somebody's wife, to be an influencer on Instagram, to be hot? Because they're going to get so caught up in the social part of college, when you think about it, the drinking, the hazing, the going to the parties, the going out to eat, traveling. And you know, that's what's going to happen. That's most colleges out there. Those are the fraternities and the sororities. But that was, that was done back in the 80s. And they were, that's what I was, I was watching Wolf of Wall Street. I was like, if I was back in the 80s, if I was a boomer back then, I would have been in Wall Street. 
I would have been one of those who were fucking sharks because I was doing that even with the sales. I got into the door for so many, for how I posed, how I found who they are. I figured out the strategy to get into people's worlds to sell them policies. When you're cold calling, you really have to think on your feet. I was doing nothing, I was doing anything that different, cold calling insurance clients than them cold calling clients selling them potential riches, investments that you look good on paper, but who makes out it's the freaking broker who gets the cold hard cash and that person's rich on paper. And and, and then when they want to cash out, they don't cash out, right? The broker goes, no, I got you another investment. And they keep them on that loop of investing in all these things so they can make a shit ton of money selling them the dream. Oh, they were telling you in Wolf of Wall Street, Matthew McConaughey and Leonardo DiCaprio were telling you exactly how the fucking stock market works. They're telling you exactly everything is made out of nothing, even your religion, even your politics, even your science dogmas. So when you now, so now when you when you finally release those demons and you build yourself up and you watch all these movies from 2000, 1980s, 1990s, and even you know the late 2000s, 2017, like Blade Runner, <laughs> you're like holy fuck. But now you're at the eleventh hour, and maybe you have what it takes, maybe you don't have what it takes to not be the disposable workforce. That's why it was, I was hitting it so fucking hard yesterday about what are your children going to fucking do? What are you going to do? Given that now we know that people have already discovered, you know, how to overcome cancer, feed the body, release the demons. What are you going to school for? To do another fucking stem, stem cell transplant invention? I mean, what are you going to learn how to go and open up somebody's body using anesthesia and more drugs and more things? When you already know what the outcome is, when you saw what happened to Kathy Griffin, when she ate all that radiation because she had throat cancer or something, and now you look at her, she's deteriorating even more rapidly, excessively. Like, what are you going to school for when you're competing against those in Europe, in Northern European countries, in China? What, what, what are you competing for? If you don't get your body, mind, and spirit to such a level of releasing those demons and adapting to all this shit that you can't control, then what the fuck are you going to school for? What are you doing your job for? What what kind of future do you have for your kid that's like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? And people are like offended by that. Absolutely, because it's the reality. That's what you're facing. You think you're gonna marry off your kid to this person, that person? You can't tell now who people are, who people are anymore. It, it people are a little bit crazy and cuckoo because of all the crap going on. With the frequencies, you know, triggering people's predisposed issues, and they're 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 not so super stable. I wouldn't want to marry my I wouldn't have my daughter bank on marrying some dude who you have no idea what's in their background. You have no idea anything. You don't want to put them in that. You don't want to set them up for that. Can they be set up to be on their own? And then you look at your, your community and things are going to the wayside. Companies are going under. Competition is fierce. Industries are leaving certain towns. And I'm telling you, that's why releasing those demons and building yourself up before you start picking a career is going to be paramount because then you're going to be levels, heads and shoulders above the people around you when it comes to competing for those really good jobs. Because some places out there in the world don't have the shit that we have over here in the Northeast. They don't have all this crap. They're in clean, air is clean and crisp, the weather is relatively stable, the economy is stable, the people are relatively stable, and that's like Switzerland. Different parts of the Northern European countries are not experiencing what America is experiencing. And so then, what are you going to do? You're going to follow the traditional methods that was based upon a slower frequency in a more aggressive environment and possibly not even be able to compete because your predisposed issues will come up or you get stronger from this environment. You only have two choices. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, 
It's not fun to hear that from somebody. That how are your daughters and sons going to compete out there in the world world? So a lot of places don't have what we're dealing with. And so, yeah. And so mass energy equation, the equation developed by Albert Einstein, shit, <laughs> which is usually given as E equals MC squared, showing that when the energy of a body changes by an amount E, no matter, okay, I got that. The factor squared, the speed of light is in a vacuum. Three times 10 to the eighth power may be regarded as the conversion factor relating units of mass and energy. The equation predicts did the possibility of releasing enormous amounts of energy by the conversion of mass to energy, which is also called the Einstein equation. So you can imagine with CERN, the particle accelerator, and all that, and you have all these different bodies, different sizes, the more body you have, the better off that you'll be able to handle the insulation of that energy and convert it, and then bring on the energy of the food. So whatever energy amplifiers that are out there, HARP, CERN, Wi-Fi, you have the substance to be able to deal with it and maintain and be relatively relative equilibrium and release demons from all the accelerated particles from the fires and anything else that they could be dropping. Okay. And so climate change is excessive temperature fluctuations. Energy release formula to calculate the energy release, multiply the change in temperature of the system by the mass and specific heat capacity. And so particle acceleration influencing the growth of a rate of cells will cause cancer because part of your cells will die and then your body will develop new growth at an accelerated rate. So that's why you don't want to carry so much damage in your body, why you have to release those damaged cells through mucus, poop and pee and whatever. So because if you're holding so much damaged cells, not only will it, will it destroy you at some point, but it will also cause new growth somewhere else. And if you've been combating new growth with herbs and extracts and painkillers and oncology and you somehow missed a growth somewhere and then the particles accelerate from climate change, excessive temperature fluctuations, then you will see fast moving cancers. Because that's what cancer is based upon is that there is a certain amount of damage in your body that requires then the body to want to compensate for that damage. No different than what's going on right now. We have so much dying reproducing because we have so much death. There's got to be a certain amount of reproduction so there's not all out extinction. Well, the body works the same way. When you hold a lot of damage in your body, then the body is going to want to go and live and it's going to cause new cancer cells, new growth called cancer because that's fast moving growth. That's why when I, when I was saying that at some point, well, when I was saying that at the salt the nanoparticles, when you're putting salt nanoparticles on top of a fast moving growth, it's electron for electron. And then any excessive electron will then go to another cell. And then there's a, a very relative temporary equilibrium. That's called a cure, but they don't last long. So salt has a curative effect. It goes electron for electron. Anything excessive then goes to the next thing. And so you have that equilibrium. It's like a flat line when you think about it. Because 100% cured is electron for electron and there is no activity. There's no evolution. There's no growth. There's not even any kind of energy conversion. So you're dead. But when you have 69 trillion cells and you're taking in a certain amount of antibiotics, oncology, salt and water, then you may have relative equilibrium. You The, the energy is not as excessive, but then that also puts you in deficit because then when the cures wear off, then the life will redouble its efforts to want to live. And that's where people can't handle the body redouble its efforts to want to survive. And then they shut down. Okay. So holding damage in your body is what causes the cancer. When you have a closed system, holding damaged cells in your body will cause a rapid growth of new cells and also hormonal imbalances. Cortisol accumulation, fat accumulation. And that's the issue is that we have a lot of closed systems that either are increasing in size every climate change or they're aging rapidly, deteriorating. 
or yeah. And they're constantly using the remedies and things like that and looping in their specific issues. Okay. So particle acceleration influencing the growth of rate of cells will cause cancer because part of your cells will die and then your body will develop new growth at an accelerated rate. That's why you have to have enough substance on you to convert the energy and release. But when you have so much substance, that also will tax your body because that's too much intelligence that it has to deal with. And you can have not enough intelligence to be able to make the connections and deal with the energy conversion. You'll be converted out of existence. Okay? And that's why you must have an effective release process. So the rate of death and the rate of growth are relatively balanced. So one does not outdo the other. You don't want to sustain so many damaged cells triggering the new life to develop even faster. Because again, when you are developing cancer, because that's based upon the damage in your body, and then you're taking oncology to that, now you stop the new growth and you have damaged cells in your body. So then those damaged cells cause the aging process. It cannibalizes everything in the body because it's damaged and it's just eating what it can. That, that damage is like little demons and they also torture people. And that's why a lot of people who are aging out, they all look kind of the same. There's a very specific look to those who are aging aggressively. And that's what's depicted in, in, in Disney. All the female villains, either they're like Ursula or like the Wicked Witch of the West or, uh, is that Disney? That's Frank Oz or L. Frank Baum. Wizard of Oz, but uh, all the different witches in Disney, like in Snow White, even Maleficent, she had a very specific look about her, though they glamorized her with Angelina Jolie. And so you don't want to end up looking like a cliche. So every time there are damaged cells in the body, it develops more baby cells called cancer. When you slow down the evolution and growth of new cells and you slow down the death process, then it's a slow deterioration. But if your environment shifts again and accelerates the particles in the atmosphere and in your body, then you'll see a resurgence of growth or an accelerated decline. You will also see some crazy ass behaviors in the community and everyone will be excessively intense about their position. This is why you must tread carefully in public an extremely diverse company because everyone is being triggered right now. Everyone. And if what you say on Facebook is so offensive to certain people, fuck. But at this point, you can't let what others think of you stop you. But you feel bad because it's not like I want to lose friends, but I swear, friends understand that people have to do what they have to do to get it out. Okay. And so, you know, it's probably best not to have friends on Facebook in your real life, because if you want to speak your truth, you don't want to be subject to feel like you're offending somebody. So then you have to almost expect to lose friends and lose supporters because you will inevitably offend somebody. And so... When you don't have as many friends and you're not relying on your friends for a company, then you have so much fucking freedom to say what you got to say and develop boundaries and do whatever. It's when those have so many friends and family and people that are afraid to offend jobs and all that stuff that are real sensitive to who you are, and what you represent. You don't have freedom. You're fucking jailed. And so that's why I'm priding myself on not having too many close friends if at all, that I rely on that I'm afraid to offend. I will offend everybody. I will offend everyone and there is no discrimination on my end because you got to see, I have to point out everything, everything in our society is obviously going to be flipped. And so that's kind of what I've taken on. And so, yeah, so then that's when I, wrote, when I read about where did the energy originate and all that, okay? So you don't want to have, that's why you must understand the release process, releasing those demons in your poop, doing my method if possible, if you can handle it, cut your nails and all that stuff, take a back seat or take 
have your lifestyle and social stuff, take a back seat so you can handle the rest and not feeling obligated to go do stuff. But some people are obligated to do whatever because that's the world they built. And so they really can't do what I'm doing. And I understand. And then don't follow me because I will offend the hell out of you because you won't have the capacity to do this. All right. And so this is the time where you need to be intense about everything because now more than ever, shit is getting real. However, I don't blame you if it's too much. It's pretty insane out there. And so New York and Ohio, the Northeast, is feeling this, feeling it even more so. The particles from the Canadian fires are freaking aggressive. And with particle acceleration and climate change, they have become very activated. And so when you think about the, the VACCINESs are just triggering a certain amount of growth relative to the conditions and exposure. So remember, nothing is poison. However, in a slower atmosphere, like way slow, you didn't see so much growth, like accelerated growth called diagnosable conditions and autoimmune disorders. As the system kept accelerating the particles and the climate change, as the storms become stronger and seasons become more, seasons become more aggressive, and then you're doing the Vs, which, okay, no big deal, or in other types of therapies are causing growth. That's why you're seeing such an excessive acceleration in the growth. And then, of course, the diagnosable conditions like cancer. And that's why the, that's why people are making correlation equals causation, because they don't realize that the environment has been steadily increasing its intensity, the particle acceleration. Just because you learned about particle acceleration last year doesn't mean it hasn't been used for the last 100 years. It has been, but you just didn't know about it. All right. And so... That's why the V's are so highly volatile right now because the particles, the climate change has made them extremely activated and why people are seeing the, the rapid growth, the cancers on turbo, turbo cancers. Not because the V's really, the V's just do what they do, but it's the environment that has sped up the activation, the immune system activation. And people aren't releasing at the level that they are replicating. And so when you're not releasing at the level that you're replicating, then you're going to see diagnosable conditions and also diet suddenly. All right. But can you tell someone that over there in the diet suddenly world that are blaming the bees? They don't even look at climate change. They don't even believe climate change. I've seen people who are in the anti V world deny the climate change, like actively deny it and say the media is lying. Ha <laughs> ha. No, honey. Uh, uh, no. That's what's activating all the V's to be so excessively turbolistic. <laughs> That's not even a word. That's what's going on is the environment has accelerated. I can feel it. Last night when I was blowing out, when I was coughing so hard last night, I'm just like, holy shit. I don't even, I mean, and that's because even being outside for that minute, my body had to go and convert that energy and release. I have a great filtration process. But those who are recommended all the different Vs don't have a great immune system or a great filtration process. So it's not going to matter what they do if they don't open their system and release the demons and overcome their food allergies. And that takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. And so, yeah, at the 11th hour, you learn this. It's almost too late. It's too late for a lot of people. It's too late. They don't have, they won't have what it takes to do, to do that. And so they're left watching this information <coughs> feeling, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus. Feeling left out, feeling like, holy shit, I can't do this. And it's like a suffering. And they don't have a support system around them to do this. Their friends and family are too fucking scared, and they should be. But there's some of you that are not in that position of being too far gone. That's who I'm talking to. So if you feel you're too far gone, please do not watch these videos. Because you will feel hopeless. You will feel like, holy fuck. And you'll be upset at the system. And I'm sorry. It's not my fault. I just learned this shit. And the reason why I learned it so much faster because the environment has increased the connectivity faster. In a slower frequency environment, I would not have made these connections. But given the last three years, I've been dealing with all the different hives and the headaches and the fatigue and all of my PTSD from whatever and facing all my childhood and my background and all the things that just pissed me off and I felt whatever I felt. It may, has given me the opportunity to make these connections quicker because I released that trauma. And I fed myself. I discovered the power of cream and milk. And yeah, 
facing feeling uncomfortable and questioning every single pol politic, religion, science, understanding that correlation equals causation is what has, is the downfall of most humans making that correlation equals causation. They don't understand everything, every factor between A and Z. They only want to, they only want to know A, Z, but not A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, and then realize that they can redirect. That correlation is not always equal causation unless you can prove in a court of law or through science that you are not two cells. You're not even three cells. You are 69 trillion cells that have every chance to redirect. But if you aim to want to pass away and say that enjoy your life because it has an expiration date, then you aim to make sure that every one of those 69 trillion cells do not get supported correctly and that will die without that will pass away. So if you are made up of 69 trillion cells, microbes, and those microbes are made up of infinite amount of proteins, you have every fucking chance, 69 trillion chances to redirect what's going on and adapt. 69 fucking trillion opportunities. And when you intend, and so when, when someone dies, they intended to make sure those 69 trillion cells do not get a proper support system. They intend to pass away. They don't want to change. They don't want to evolve. and that's kind of how shit works. So they're the only the A plus Z people. Give me the problem and give me the solution relative to your intention and then their belief system they should die someday. Well, that problem, that solution ended up in their death. Okay? That's what it is. And so when you understand A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, K, L, M, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, then you understand why Z came out to be the way it did. But that is abstract thinking. That is nonlinear thinking. That is the ability to be able to understand all factors that led up to a specific outcome. So a disposable workforce are those that are given the problem and given the answer. That's a disposable workforce. They are in the politics. They are in the religions, all fucking religions. And also in the science dogmas. That's what academia has produced. Disposable workforce. And then there are some that have been given the opportunity to figure out if they can handle their childhood and the world and then the changes of the present, the future, and the past. And so I was given that opportunity, and I'm giving you the opportunity that, yeah, if you have what it takes to be able to deal with pulling out your shit and eating food and resting and taking and, and t having your social life and everything else take a back seat, not give up your body, mind, and spirit to strangers who don't care where you end up, that you finally bring the resources back to you, stop giving away to everyone who doesn't care about where you end up, okay? You might have a fucking chance. It's okay to be selfish right now. It's okay to be selfish. The system is giving the people the free energy. People don't need your energy. You're just wasting your energy by trying to save people. You're wasting your energy by trying to always keep them company because they're lonely and they depend upon you to entertain them. Maybe it's time now to finally pull back your resources and give them back to yourself and save yourself in this or you become or you will choose to be a disposable workforce. So growth is not, okay, so, and the, and the V's are just triggering a certain amount of growth. They're relative to the conditions and exposure. Nothing is poison. However, mass amounts of accelerated change is overwhelming to many people. Growth is not inherently bad, but when it has been accelerated, and if you're not keeping up with it and condition your body to deal with it, it will be hell and death if you don't learn how to condition your body to release without using aggressive means in the holistic and allopathic world. And when you wake up to the reality of the world, you can't, fucking shut up and I can't fucking shut up. I can't. It's becoming even more obvious and more apparent and the movies are even telling us <laughs> once you finally release those demons. I'm sorry if this is too much for some of you. Okay. And so if you have to block me and delete me, I understand if you do, but if you do and I find out, I'll ask you first if it was Facebook before I assume you did it. And if you did, I understand you don't have to answer me. Okay. But it's fucking insane out there. And as you know, I am not out to destroy anyone, but the truth is so fucking crazy. It's so hard to hear. And believe me, it's been very hard for me to hear so many different truths. So choose the ones you want to hear that you can handle. 
All right, because even my truth could destroy you. My truth may not be for everyone. And so that's the thing about, you know, with as far as cancer, cancer is something that you're that you have um, uh, you're resisting change. And so you're keeping damage within you. But change is going to force itself upon you. And so when you resist change, that equals entropy. That's the. First, second, third law, that's thermodynamics. Entropy is the laws of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only converted. Um, substance is lost through all energy conversion. Okay? Like force equals mass times acceleration type of thing. <laughs> and then the third law is that in a dynamic environment, an entity cannot be cured. You cannot be in continuous equilibrium in and live in a dynamic environment. Okay, that's the three laws of thermodynamics. That's entropy. And then the entropy is then when you bring on the substance. So entropy is salting out. Okay, so when you're releasing those demons and you're salting out in the beginning of the J world and also with this ionic environment, but then salting in is salting your food so you can then have development of negentropy, bringing things together. So you become a whole person. Okay, so I got that. And so then let me go back to, oh yeah, hold on. What is this? What did I say up here? So then I said, okay, so yeah, I woke up to coffee and I got that. Then of course we have the whole alien invasion. I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll waking up to a two foot or eight foot alien out there. <laughs> I don't know. Let me go back to what I... Let me just make sure. But that's why people have cancer, because they hold so much damage within and they won't release it. And when you get operations, you have damage. Okay? When you have things removed, you have damage. And when you hold damage in, it will destroy you. And also even cause cancer, potentially. And so when I did the... Oh, here, actually, I'm going to go through all the way to the to my last video, which was. So I'm sure this video sounds okay. I just wonder how it records with that clicking sound. Every time I raise my voice, you hear that clicking sound. But it annoyed me yesterday, but I'm like, ah, there is something to this Facebook Live that you guys enjoy. So hopefully it's helping me make the connections. Hopefully those that listen to it won't get too annoyed by any background noise. But I did do a noise canceling thing on the background noise canceling thing on my live stream but hold on a second okay fuck that's too much information not really okay so here we go so i said you know the if formula when i was reading how to develop the if formula on excel the basic concept programming all nouns in the world of computers and arguments within proteins and elements and finances logical test formulas with within excel exercise in your left brain if you're mostly dominant in your right brain Okay, the theory is that people are either left brain or right brain, meaning that one side of their brain is dominant. If you're mostly analytical and methodological in your thinking, then the theory says that you're left brained. If you intend to be more creative or artistic, you're right brained. Okay, so, you know, you know what you are. And if you want to exercise the other side of your brain that's not dominant, then that's, there's exercises to do that. You can Google that and YouTube that, okay? And so while you're releasing your demons, you can then develop and exercise both sides of your brain. So then you can understand how the world works and be able to be and be competitive out there by having both sides of your brain work and you'll know how to switch back and forth and with ease. And that takes conditioning. OK, and that's how you become smarter in this society. Because you're competing against those who have been conditioned to be extremely left brained or extremely right brained. If you can do both, holy shit, that would be awesome. So exercising both cranial atmospheres. Okay. <sighs> okay. And so the system can condition left brain people to build and develop whatever they want using already given arguments. But when the arguments changed, their right brain was not conditioned enough to see the value of the arguments requiring the use of their right brain or creative side. So intolerance to diversity or the creativity of biotech and lifestyles probably shows an embedded if then logic in the left side of the brain with lack of conditioning the rights of their brains to see the creativity in another parameter. That is the very essence of intolerance. 
you were made to think you were an R creative, but not in the larger sense. You were made to be creative relative to the needs of the company and the government academia. That's a disposable workforce. Okay. So don't get jealous of those that these kids that have five degrees. They were developed for that, for that, for the very, for that very reason to have five degrees in, 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 in high school. And they're going to be geared towards something for biotech or for some jet propulsion or NASA. And they are disposable because they will not survive. Most likely they will not survive after they've given up their resources like Imhotep, who was only 20 years old when he developed the surgeries. He was the first doctor and he died before he was, he died around 20 years old. That's what they're developing right now out there in the population. Don't be jealous of them. Just remember, they are part of the disposable workforce. They will most likely not get to my information because they will be extremely guided and geared for their specific profession. And if they get money and accolades, hey, good for them. Remember, they have an expiration date. Okay? So do not feel jealous of the CRISPR gene edited people. Remember, again, disposable workforce. They are being programmed okay so and so you may think you have full use of both sides of the brain in your career field but in actuality intolerant people regardless intolerant people regardless of what they are not tolerant have atrophied their right brain for from acknowledging the creative side to the world and so that's all the intolerance to all the different sexual orientation and lifestyles i understand you have kids that's fine. Keep your kids away from things that you don't agree with. But doesn't mean that you as a parent cannot tolerate. And doesn't mean you as a parent don't have the ability to tolerate different things. But if you can't tolerate and understand right from wrong and laws and appropriateness as far as what your kids view, what you view, and you know, and you can't appreciate for people who they are just because they're people, then you have been bred to be intolerant. You you were programmed to not tolerate so many things. And that speaks to lack of evolution. And if you are, yeah, if you're a creationist and you already know this because you're made to die, you're a disposable workforce. If you're a creationist, because you're only made to die and reproduce and that's it. Not evolve. Again, there's laws on the books that says what's appropriate for children and for people in our public venue. So and so the mind of humans today, the minds of humans today in the mainstream and alternative mainstream society were not actually programmed to evolve, but to regurgitate, defend, and then offend, which is why so much suffering in all the wars. All right. And so there's that. And so you also must release the demons blocking your evolution. And that is a fear unto itself. And... And so when people's minds do not evolve and their body does not, and they don't understand why their body is in immunological response, and so they destroy. And it's happening right now. They are either violent and or all about love or using fear campaigns, or they're under all types of therapies and food mitigation, defending one's lifestyle and control over whomever. That is the misalignment of the body, mind, and spirit. So when I say, fuck your love and intolerance, what about evolving your mind? And then maybe the world will change for the better. So when people's minds do not evolve and their body does, when they feel the immunological response, they don't understand why their body is an immunological response. And so they destroy the life in their body. They destroy the evolution of their body and they try to keep their same mindset. Being cured equals a disposable workforce, whether it's in that specific body or that group of people. Body of that person or body of people. You're choosing to be disposable if you can't evolve. That's exactly what's going on. It's pretty remarkable when you finally figure out what's going on. And so, um, so I got this when John and I were going back and forth and we were talking about, talking about something, um, about all the apocalyptic hazing or hazes, haze from the, the, the wildfires. And I said, oh, seasonal particle acceleration has always happened. Pollen, oh yeah, springtime allergies, another particle acceleration growth, another immunological response mechanism of growth, evolution, and instability. Because remember that the trees are growing, 
blooming, plants are growing and blooming. That's particle acceleration. That's growth. That's cancer, disease, and chronic illness, right? Another immunological response mechanism a gro of growth, evolution, and instability warranting vaccines and diagnosable conditions during that time of cold and flu season, change in the weather and temps and seasons, all particle acceleration via climate change, comma, organic or contrived. And you can choose. It doesn't matter which one you think it is. Can you survive it? That's, the, that's more the point. You can have a million stories around the same thing, but will you survive it? And so you were, you are, we're not bred to be civilized in a, in a higher intelligence. You're bred with fear around your lifestyle to keep you in line with whatever programming is required in that society. Okay. And so when you're bred to be in fear, yeah, that's exactly what was in my household. We were bred to be in fear of, of mom. Be in fear. And so if mom was the fear, all fearful one, then when anyone is mad at you or you're afraid that they're going to not like what you're doing, then you that will come back to you and remember what your mom was like, that she was laying down. She was legalistic. She was laying down the law. She may even spanked you when you were out of line. That's exactly what goes on in the religions out there. They use fear and love as a way to control all religions. That's the only way they keep people under control, right? Because if you're not bred to be civilized in a higher intelligence, then you have to use fear as a way to keep you in line. And they have to use violence too. But now people are like, no, you can't do that. And so when people are, they go out of line and they're all chaotic and they don't have any kind of higher evolutionary, you know, intelligence, then they're allowed to act out whatever. And so these kids are out of control, right? And they're like, oh yeah, well, that's, they should be spanked. Not necessarily, they, they cause even more stuff. But the system is now causing chaos by not allowing you to do what you got to do. But even then, if you do what you got to do, then they'll make it worse. Parents are fucked. They don't, they, they don't have the power because they're not developing the higher intelligence to figure out how to release those demons to calm down the hormones so that kid is not acting out. But you think the parents are going to change? No, they're not. Remember, they were told they were gods. And so they're going to instill fear around whatever. They're going to be, I mean, it's pretty, it's, this is the takedown of people that were bred to be disposable. You're, you're seeing it right now. And so you are in a bread with fear around your lifestyle to keep you in the line with whatever, to keep you in line with whatever programming is required in that society. That's why you need law enforcement to put the fear and written laws in the books that will always change. And so you're bred, you are not bred to be tolerant. You were bred to be in fear. You were bred, you were not bred to evolve. You were bred to create and then die for, from lack of evolution. You were bred to convert yourself out of existence from the present waking world once the system utilized all your resources. That's why everyone's suffering right now. Some people just hide it better than others because they have a nice car. They have a shiny face. They have a shiny, happy face. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. Right? But you know, all that shit. It's all bullshit. How can you be happy when you're deteriorating? When you're watching your friends and family die like that? There's no fucking happiness. It's all fake shit. Remember, she also went through, okay, this is Kathy Griffin. And she's gone through so much. She's deteriorating. So remember, she also went through a major therapy using radiation in her food. I saw that last year before, before she was eating food with a high amounts of radiation as part of a therapy. Okay. And so I like click on the link. And then um, just because someone was saying, you know, that these fires are all synchronized and all that stuff. Right? <laughs> and then someone responded, well, they were happening in our town the same way, you know, before all this, like during the, you know, during the fall. So just because fires happened synchronized in a synchronized way the same time 20 years ago doesn't mean that they weren't planned back then, okay? You only know the world how it was presented to you and you have been conditioned to accept whatever has been presented to you. And then when things change, you think it's something nefarious. Change was always going to happen. You just weren't prepared for it. But they kept telling you, but people were not prepared for it. And so... um. And so Matt Lamb was saying all weather is engineered, right? Of course, absolutely. And it always has been. It's just increasing intensity, which is why we're alarmed. We were conditioned to accept the seasons changing 20, 30 years ago, as well as today, even more so, or even 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Particle acceleration and the intensity in the heat and cold is climate change. Okay, can you handle excessive growth? And do you know how to release without compromising your immune system? All right. 
And so it is the rate of change is what people are having an issue with. You were bred, you were bred to be in fear of change. That is why all the fear campaigns and the never ending cures market. So when you're seeing your naturopathic, homeopathic, allopathic, and whoever, they're just keeping you. They're just keeping you. Well, they're making sure that you don't evolve. They're making sure that they keep nailing another coffin, another nail into your coffin. Every single time you see someone with a cure, someone with a homeopathic remedy, every single time you get a certain operation or an oncological procedure, it's another nail in the coffin. Because you were bred to be in fear of change. And so I said about the Ruffle Wall Street, Brother Room. Yeah, I would have been like that. Oh, absolutely. Fuck yeah, I would have been. <laughs> when I watch Boiler Room, I love Vin Diesel. And DiCaprio had the same way Vin Diesel when he was doing the Boiler Room with Ben Affleck. And it's always been like the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, all these hard charging salesmen that were just crafty and strategic. And they knew this. I was so like that too. If I just would have been at the right, oh, I would have, I would have been rich if I was a dude and have PMS and I was exposed to the finance world with no real major background, but my damn juvenile record would probably have stopped me from getting a series seven test. It stopped me from getting a series six and 63, which was for selling, um, I don't know, uh, life insurance products that were variable life insurance products, VULs. See, I would never have been able because yeah, with my background as being a, a rebellious person, they would have probably thought with my background that I would be one of those that would be like a Bernie Madoff or something, <laughs> right? So when you have a juvenile record like that, yeah, it will stop you from, the SEC would stop you from getting in there before because you know how to strategically deal with people. You, 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 oh, God. Now I get it. Now they that's why they do that vetting process. And so, absolutely, I would have been one of those. So I was bred for something different, which is fine. <laughs> but I, I know who I am. I can be very strategic and rebellious and find the back way into things. But luckily, I, I do it now with the back way of, of the immune system. But it's really the front way, but we've been taught the back way and then somebody else controlling you. Now I know how to control myself. Even when I was a telemarketer, for one life insurance company, I was telling somebody that I used to work with that I found the back way into all the calls, the phone numbers that were dedicated to certain agents based upon their status in the company. So I found the back way and I would dial those numbers. Sometimes it, it, it would intercept the phone call. And so the person on the phone with that specific dedicated agent would be like, hold on, let me get this call. And then I would be calling and be like, hey, I wanna, I'm on the phone with one of your other agents. How the hell did you call it? And so I figured out how to get phone numbers that were meant for somebody else. And if I can beat them to it, I would get that phone call. I figured out the back way in the computer system. And I'm like, oh, my God. But that's but that's cheating. Yeah, it kind of is. But that was what I was like, dude, I want I want to make the money. I want to be number one. I want to be this. I want to be that. Nobody caught me in that. And it wasn't like illegal. It's just I found the back way into the system. <laughs> and I was telling other agents, they're like, what? They're like, what? And then I quit the company because I just wasn't going to do it. <laughs> so, you know, I, so I, I strategy, I've, I've always been strategic. Just give me whatever problem. I'll find a way. I'll find a way to get what I want or what, what is needed. So, and so, yeah, you become very strategic when you're forced to. And so then remember the weather balloons that happened and you see that picture of New York. So remember New York today, Ken, Cali never looked like this. I guess it never did. Remember those Chinese balloons? measuring wind acceleration <laughs> all the particles spreading lines or chemtrails and so the rate of frequency acceleration has increased exponentially like the system revving up the engines and then you see where the where those balloons you see where those balloons are right one in canada one over there in guam or hawaii texas florida yeah yeah so now you see what's going on here Okay, and then Teen allegedly hires Hitman to kill a seven-year-old. Like, what the hell? The mega variant, like I told you, the, the disease developing frequencies, the letter of the Greek alphabet are alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, the iota, 
Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, 1, XC, or Omicron, and Omicron, P1, RHO, and then Sigma, Ta, Epsilon, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, 1, P, PSI, 1, and then Omega. And we're in the Omega variant right now. COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2 is the Omega variant. We're in it. We're in the last frequency, and it's disease developing with particle acceleration and other partic particulates. Okay? And so if you don't introduce change, it will never happen. But if you resist change, you will never happen. And people are realizing that. And so there's ambulance all over my neighborhood. When someone says, enjoy your life, you know, um, it has an expiration date. I had to counter that so hard. And I had to unfollow the person because I'm not going to have them cast spells on me. Okay. Are you there? Okay. And so life only has an expiration date if you intend to, if you tend for it to have an expiration date. And so, and so I read the opposite of that. And so I had to balance out the scales. Not all life has an expiration date. You have 69 trillion lives in your body. And when they all die, it was because you intended for those 69 trillion microbes to pass away. You can enjoy life in so many different ways and you don't have to die with an expiration date. Okay. And so... Yeah. And so anyways, there's that. And now I'm going to end this pretty quick here, but. Okay, I so said that. And I, I did their Facebook Reels on that. And guess the WAP has fixed the rain, train derailment. And then woke up coughing, and there you go. I'm done. And Blade Runner showing you that. And, okay. So, can't need tutor, yeah. All right, so that's it. Hopefully you guys have a good one. Um, I'm done. I will see how this transmission ends up and we'll see what happens. All right. Bye.